This is Greystain's public school in Western Sydney. Each kid at this school gets about $9,000 in government funding each year. But at the private school down the road, each kid gets nearly $1,300 more in government funding, with fees on top of that. At the end of the day, Greystain's public operates on three quarters of the income of the nearby private school, despite teaching similar kinds of kids. In Australia, we have two types of schools, public and private. Well, there's three types actually, since we have Catholic private schools and independent private schools. In total, there are about 9,500 schools in Australia, and nearly one-third of them are private. More than one-third of Australian students are in private schools, one of the highest rates in the OECD. In some countries, like the US, the UK and Finland, students in private schools get almost no public funding. And in Canada and New Zealand, the proportion of public money going to private schools is much lower than in Australia. So how did Australia end up here? The reason Australian governments fund private schools begins with the post-war baby boom, which put a huge strain on both government and Catholic schools. The Catholic school system, which had traditionally educated children from poor families, was close to collapse. The federal government decided to help fund the Catholic sector to avoid a huge flood of students into a government school system that was already under stress. So how are our schools funded today? Think of total school funding as a pie. Three quarters of the pie comes from state and territory governments. Nearly all of that three quarters goes to public schools. The federal government funds the other quarter of the pie. Three and every five federal dollars goes to private schools. So on average, each public school student gets around 20% more public funding than each private school student. But that gap has narrowed in recent years. Here's why. The federal government has increased school funding over the last 10 years, with the aim of improving performance in the poorest schools. The idea is that more money should go to schools with children from disadvantaged families. But the redistribution of money from least to most needy never happened because, let's face it, no one likes losing money. So, in the end, the government promised that no school would lose a dollar. Instead, everyone would get more money and needy schools would get the most money. Sounds good, right? Well, fast forward to 2018 and turns out that didn't really happen either. In fact, the income gap has grown. Why? Because special deals made along the way mean private schools often get more public funding than the government's own formula says they're supposed to get while nearly all public schools get less. Plus, unlike private schools, public schools get hardly any money from parents and other private sources. So when all income is counted, each public school student ends up with about 65 cents for every dollar going to a private school student.